second part of Surah Yaseen, second of, of three parts, inshallah, that it will take for us to complete Surah Yaseen, inshallah. In the last part, we took how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about the beautiful story of this man by the name of Habib bin Musa al Najjar. Yeah? Beautiful human being that, that was the only one worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, that actually was a hujjah against all his people that unfortunately they killed him, they tore him apart, they burnt him alive and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entered him to Jannah and he is exemplary da'i, the one who has so much love for his people that despite the fact that the people killed him he still had r mercy and rahmah in his heart so much so that he was, uh, he made an exclamation how I wish my people would know how Allah has forgiven me and given me this beautiful Jannah as a compensation in the next two pages, which is what, what we will take today, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows his anger at them killing Habib. How dare they kill this man Habib? How dare, dare they kill a wali of Allah azawajal? How dare they kill a believer? Because a believer's blood is more precious in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than even the Kaaba. And if that is true, that the believer's blood is more precious in the eyes of Allah azawajal than, than even the Kaaba, then only Allah knows his anger of how serious his anger is when someone harms a believer. So, to, so today, when all these atrocities are happening across the Muslim world, only Allah knows how much anger he has and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and rahmah is the only thing protecting these, these human beings who are perpetrating these crimes against the believers from also having a terrible punishment just like these people from this town. So Ikhwati, in the first few verses of this uh, page number three of Surah Yaseen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell us about <coughs> how Allah punished this town. And these people were so insignificant that Allah did not have to send an army from uh, the heavens to destroy. No, all he did was told Jibreel, Jibreel, destroy them with your sound. So Jibreel screamed and the scream of Jibreel was enough to destroy the town. You know, Jibreel is so powerful. So we'll come inshallah and talk about the power of Jibreel inshallah in just a bit inshallah then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the first page and from the middle of the first page till the end of the first page talks about all the signs of which, of, of which are very apparent uh, to anyone who ponders on the signs of Allah are very apparent why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so strong and so great that if anyone simply pondered on how the moon and the sun and the stars have their own orbits and how the plants uh, are, are raised up and how Allah sends the water and the rain and how Allah mixes the sun into the, the night into the day and the day into the night. If anyone were to ponder on, the, on these things itself, it would be enough enough as a, as a reminder for them to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya khuti, uh, one of the problems that we have today in our life is we do not take a moment to ponder. We don't take time to reflect. Um, when we go for a holiday, for example, we go with family and it happens to be a family holiday and then we say, okay, what are we going to do with the kids? Yeah, okay, let them go to the swimming park and let's go to the beach. And then it's just full on, even our holidays are full on. Sometimes we need holidays from holidays. You know, sometimes, you know, my holidays are so full on. I said, man, I need a holiday from this holiday because, you know, you, you're trying to have so much fun in such a short time. <laughs> They said, come on man, holiday is meant to be for reflections, I'm sitting down, just looking at the beach, looking at the mountains, walking on the grass with your, you know, with, without any shoes, you know, taking a hike in the forest and just, just pondering on the creation of Allah. That's, we don't do that enough. Our Prophet Sallallahu on the other hand, that's what he did for months on end. Months on end, he went to a cave, that's what you call the holiday, that's what you call an escape from your day-to-day -day life so you can ponder. And if you don't have time to ponder, how will you reflect on the past? How will you think about the future? If you do not do so, this is how Allah Zawajal has created a barrier in the front and in the back. And that's why some of the scholars said, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ سَدَّنْ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ سَدَّنْ means that Allah has blinded them so much that they do not ponder on their past and cannot think about their future. Right? Yeah, amazing, isn't it? That Allah has blinded them so much or made them so busy with their affairs that they simply cannot think about the past or what they have done in the past and as a result, not think about where they're headed. And subhanAllah, ya khwani, this is a big shame, big shame. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these beautiful verses has given us enough ample ammunition for us to think about again and again Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His creation. 
Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then talks about how Allah has created, in the next page after that, Allah talks about how Allah has created ships upon which people sail. He talks about Nuh alayhi salatu salam and how, uh, without mentioning his name, talks about how Allah just saved him and his people. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about uh, signs of the day of judgment when, this, when, the, when the blowing on the horn happens and how every single thing in this dunya uh, will change. And at the point of blowing, it will happen so fast that no one will be able to even, uh, you know, make a final call to their family or, uh, you know, advise them with the final advice. It will come so, so quickly, inshallah. So be the land, the second page when we take it, we will talk about the day of judgment and its signs. And we'll also talk about be the land, how quick the day of judgment will take place and Israfil and all about Israfil, inshallah ta'ala, and his horn, inshallah. It's all coming up, inshallah, in this beautiful surah, surah Yaseen. Very powerful description of. Uh, of three things again. What are those three things? Believing in Allah, believing in His Prophet, and believing in the Day of Judgment, right? These are the three things that Surah Yaseen is all about. Let's take it, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan ar-Rajim. Wama anzalna ala qawmihi. And we, wama, meaning we have not. Anzalna, sent down, ala qawmihi, upon his people, min ba'dihi, after his death, meaning after the death of Habibi Musa Najjar, min jundin, from the armies, min as sama, from the heavens, wama kunna munzilin, and we didn't have to do, do it. Meaning, we didn't send an army down from the heavens to destroy them, and we didn't have to do it. Meaning, they were so insignificant to us, they were so pathetic, they were so weak to us, that all it was was Jibreel screaming, and the sound of the voice of Jibreel was enough to destroy them, turn them into smithereens. Okay, in Kanat, it was nothing but illa sayhatan wahida. It was only one scream. Sayha. What's a sayha? You know, a huge scream that comes from the deepest part of the throat. Okay, you know, a scream that comes from the deepest part of the throat when, for example, you've just discovered your, you know, your something's happened to your house or your children have just, you know, about to touch the fire and you scream out loud, you know, from the deepest part of your, your body. That's the sayha. In kanat illa sayhatan wahida. It was nothing but one scream. Fa'ida hum khamidun. And and just because of the scream, they were khamidun. What's khamidun? Khamid means to be completely vanished. Completely vanished. Meaning the scream of Jibreel. All so the tafsir mentions that Allah Zawajal told Jibreel to scream, and all he did was scream once, and because of the power of his sound, everything exploded. Meaning they exploded so much and the explosion was so strong, right? The explosion was so strong that, you know, it did not leave any pieces. Even the pieces exploded into, into smaller pieces, which exploded into smaller pieces. This is how strong the voice of Jibreel is. How strong is Jibreel? Allah Azzawajal says about Jibreel, Allamahu Shadeedul Quwa. He was taught, meaning he, meaning Muhammad Sallallahu was taught by someone, Shadeedul Quwa, very, very severe in strength. That is Jibreel alayhi salatu salam. In fact, scholars of Islam mention that Jibreel has the ability and power Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him to destroy the earth. He is that, that powerful. An angel on his own can destroy a whole, a whole town, a whole continent, if not the whole, whole earth. He is that powerful. In one authentic narration, it was reported that Rasulullah saw Jibreel in his original form and he had 600 wings. And each wing was the size of the heavens. Each wing could could set the ufuk, meaning it completely blocked out the horizon. Each wing. In the authentic narration, also it is reported that when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wanted to destroy Qawm Lut, He sent Jibril again, and all Jibril did was pick up the town of Lut, which was very big town, very massive town, picked up the Qawm Lut on one tip of one wing, and turned it upside down. That's it. He is that strong. And this is why Rasulullah said in the authentic hadith that, that nothing is more severe on the shaitan than Jibreel salam. And that's why wherever Jibreel is, shaitan runs away because he's so powerful, so strong. It is for this reason why it is said that Rasulullah was given the strength of 30 camels. He's physically. Physically, the Prophet's strength was 30 camels. In fact, when the Prophet used to fight and he used to throw his sword you know, in a, in a lance or he used to strike with the sword, people could not even defend. 
you know, when you're trying to defend, like, you know, have a sword fight, for example, right? They couldn't. He's, he's, he was so strong that if he went, came down, he would just cut through the other person's sword into his body and, and that's it. He could not, they could not defend against the thrust of the Prophet because he was that strong. It is for this reason why in the Battle of Khandaq, when there was a big boulder and they couldn't break it, they had to call Rasulullah and then he said, Allahu Akbar, and then he cracked it. So he had the strength of 30 camels. Why was he given the strength of 30 camels? This is because his body could not tolerate Jibreel coming on him. Because Jibreel would come to him and sit on his body and tell him about what Allah told him. And it was so heavy, once it was reported that, that Rasulullah Abu Bakr said that I was with Rasulullah when Jibreel came to Rasulullah to tell him some of the ayat of the Quran. And his leg was resting on my leg, meaning his thigh was resting on my leg. And I felt my leg about to break from the weight of Jibreel coming on Rasulullah because it's very, very severe, very, very heavy, very, very mighty and powerful. In kanat illa sayhatan wahida. It was only a single sayha wahida fa'idha hum khamidun that they are totally vanished. This is how strong and powerful the armies of Allah Azzawajal are. And only Allah knows how many armies Allah has. Ya hasratan ala al-ibad. Man, subhanAllah, this verse, you know, when I read in Arabic, it, it, it fills my heart with pity. Because here it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Ya hasratan ibad, meaning, oh, what a pitiful state are my slaves. Means, what a pitiful, pitiful, pitiful situation are my slaves in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the pitiful nature of the slaves after they disobey Allah. Yeah? Because after they disobey Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala totally destroys them in a way that leaves nothing behind. Right? It's almost like, you know, someone who, who knows he has immense power, immense ability to destroy every single thing in, in existence. When he says, oh, woe to you, if you only knew what I can do to you. You know, in that manner, does that make sense? Yeah, when a powerful man says that to someone else, you have no idea what I can do to you. Woe to you. You know, in that manner. But this is Allah. Can you imagine Allah saying this to his ibad? Ya hasratan ala al-ibad. What a pitiful situation is that of my slaves. Ma yatihim. There does not come to him min rasulin from a messenger. Illa kanu bihi yastahzi'un. Except that they used to mock him. Meaning, woe to these slaves of mine. That not a single messenger used to, had ever come on this earth except that they mock my messengers. So how do they not expect Allah's anger to overtake His mercy and destroy them in His subhanAllah? Ya hasratan ala al-ibad, ma yatihim min rasulin illa kanu bihi yastahzi'un except that they mock Him and uh, make fun of Him. Alam yarau, have they not seen? Kam ahlakna, how many we have destroyed? Qablahum min al-qurun, how we have destroyed so many of them from the people of the past. Annahum ilayhim la yarji'oon. That they cannot ever come back to this dunya. Or some scholars said la yarji'oon meaning that they cannot find any signs of them at all. Wa in kullul lamma jami'u ladayna muhdaroon. And it is only a little while before every one of them will be recreated and be present in front of me on the day of judgment. وَآيَةٌ لَهُمْ Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in verse number 32 onwards talks about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given so many signs after signs after signs. And so why is it that people disbelieve? وَآيَةٌ لَهُمْ And an ayah for those people if they could only ponder. الْأَرْضُ الْمَيْتَ The earth which is dead. So it is already dead. أَحْيَيْنَاهَا We have given it life. وَأَخْرَجْنَا مِنْهَا حَبًّا And we have brought out from this earth hab, which is grains. فَمِنْهُ يَأْكُلُونَ So from it they eat. Meaning, in the same way as an earth is dead, and we gave it life, and from it hab, grains come out, and you eat it, the most amount of our food is actually the grains, the rice and the wheat and the barley. That is a bigger portion of our food than anything else. Why do we not take... Uh, a warning and as a sign from the, from the food we eat. Where did this come from? It came from a dead earth. If that was the case, then why will Allah not give life back to us when we have come back to the earth as well? 
فمنه يأكلون وجعلنا فيها and we have put upon this earth جنات من نخيل وأعناب we have put on this earth جنات meaning gardens من نخيل from date palms وأعناب and from grapes وفجرنا فيها من العيون and we have caused there to gush there forth many many springs من العيون many multiple springs on this earth ليأكلوا من ثمره so that they may eat from its produce and from its benefits and its uh, and and the, and the fruits that come out وما عملته أيديهم meaning and this is not what their hands have done أفلا يشكرون do they not thank me what does it mean meaning has any human being ever created the plants or the grains or has any human being caused the springs to come forth or the grapes to be produced or the date palms to be there in the desert producing these beautiful sweet grapes no meaning their hands are not the ones who have done this who did this it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who did it why do they not thank me again ikhwani shukur is a very important part أَفَلَا يَشْكُرُونَ سُبْحَانَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْأَزْوَاجَ كُلَّهَا Praise be to Allah, glory be to Allah, raised up is Allah above all things. سُبْحَانَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْأَزْوَاجَ كُلَّهَا He created all the species of these plants on this dunya. مِمَّا تُنْبِتُ الْأَرْضِ From that which the earth produces, so it grows from the earth. وَمِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ And from themselves he has created his species and his mate. وَمِمَّا لَا يَعْلَمُونَ And from that which they have no knowledge as yet of. Meaning, glory be to Allah who has produced a mate from each one of the plants and a mate from each one of us. Meaning from ourselves, from human beings. Allah, from Adam, Allah created Hawa, right? So in the same way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates the azwaj, the, the mates of, for each other. وَمِمَّا لَا يَعْلَمُونَ And from that which they have no knowledge of. And another sign, وَآيَةٌ لَهُمْ اللَّيْلُ نَسْلَخُ مِنْهُ النَّهَارِ And another sign is the layl, is the night. نَسْلَخُ Salakha is to wean out. So نَسْلَخُ meaning we, we tear from it. It's like we, we remove from it. So نَسْلَخُ مِنْهُ النَّهَارِ So from the la- night, we tear from it the day. نَسْلَخُ مِنْهُ النَّهَارِ فَإِذَا هُمْ مُظْلِمُونَ And when we let it go, then lo and behold, they are now dark again. مُظْلِمُونَ meaning they are in darkness. Meaning, we take the, the, the darkness, the light out of the night, and then suddenly we let it go, and it becomes dark again. فَإِذَا هُمْ مُظْلِمُونَ وَالشَّمْسُ تَجْرِي And the sun revolves around. لِمُسْتَقَرِّ لَهَا The sun revolves around its, its point. مُسْتَقَرِّ لَهَا means to do, استقر is to stop somewhere. So, استَقَرَّ ال شخص في مكة the person stopped and took residence in Makkah. That's istaqarra means to take up a residence or to stop somewhere. What does, what does this verse mean? Was shamsu tajri and the sun revolves around limustaqarrin laha, its point of residence. What does it mean? The scholar said this means under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't know how, we have no knowledge of this, but we know in the authentic hadith it is reported that the sun sets underneath the throne of Allah. Yeah, this is the authentic hadith. Every single day, when the sun sets, the sun sets under the throne of Allah. Every day the sun rises, it asks Allah for permission to rise. And a day in which Allah will not give it permission, will say, no, you do not have permission to rise from the east. You must rise from the west. It will rise from the west, the other side. Only Allah knows how. We've, we've got no understanding of this. This is something which the Quran mentions. That indeed the, the 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 sun has its own own istiqrar, has its own mustaqar, and only Allah knows how it is under the throne of Allah Azza Only Allah knows. So, Ikhwani, how do we know what are the different levels until the throne of Allah? So, the scholars mention in the following way: They say, here is the earth. Above the earth are seven heavens. Okay, above the seven heavens. Okay, and in each of the heavens there is a there is a Bayt al-Ma'mur, okay? In each of the heavens, there is a Kaaba, like the, like the Kaaba that we have here, which is, like the, which is the Bayt al-Ma'mur, which is the uh, Kaaba around which the angels revolve around. 70,000 angels revolve around Bayt al-Ma'mur every single day, and they will never ever get a chance to come back again. 
another new 70,000, meaning that is how much the angels are in this dunya, in, the, in, in existence. Can you imagine? Amazing, wallahi. That's why Allah says, وَمَا يَعْلَمُ جُنُودَ رَبِّكَ إِلَّا هُ No one knows the army of Allah except He. So, seven heavens. Above the seven heavens, above the seven heavens is Jannah, right? And Jannah has a hundred levels. Okay, some scholars said Jannah has 5,600 something levels. Each verse of the Quran is one level. So only Allah knows how many levels Jannah has, okay? So there's different levels. After the levels, above it is water. What do you mean water? Well, because Allah says in the Quran, elsewhere in the Quran, وَعَرْشُهُ عَلَى الْمَاء His throne is above water. So we don't know what this water is. Remember Ibn Abbas said, there is no similarity between the unseen world and this world except for names. So Allah said that there is water above the heavens. So therefore, above Al-Firdaus, which is the highest level of Jannah, above it is water. Above the water are angels. Above the angels is the throne of Allah. And Allah is established on His throne in a manner befitting His majesty. So this is the way the scholars have described it. Wallahu ta'ala alam. Allah knows best. Alam yarau kam ahlakna. Where are we now? Naam. Wa ayatul lahum. Wa ayatul lahum al-laylu naslakhu minhu al-nahar. And the, another sign for him is the layl, the night. From it we, we, we withdraw the, the nahar, the day. فَإِذَا هُمْ مُظْلِمُونَ وَالشَّمْسُ تَجْرِي لِمُسْتَقَرِّ لَهَا and the sun revolves around its mustaqar, meaning its place of rest, which is under the throne of Allah Azza wa Jal. ذَٰلِكَ تَقْدِيرُ الْعَزِيزِ الْعَلِيمِ That is the taqdeer, the strength and the ability and power of Al-Aziz, the most honored one, Al-Alim, the most knowledgeable. وَالْقَمَرْ and the, and the moon. قَدَّرْنَاهُ مَنَازِلًا And we have, we have decreed for the moon manazil. What does manazil mean? Manazil means at different phases. So we have decreed multiple phases for the moon. And how many phases the moon has? The moon has multiple phases. Some scholars said if you divide up every day into a phase, it's 28 phases. وَالْقَمَرَ قَدَّرْنَاهُ مَنَازِلَ حَتَّى عَادَكَ الْعُرْجُونِ الْقَدِيمِ Until the moon in its full brightness on the day of Badr. Badr, Badr means a full moon. It returns back to Urjun al Qadim. Urjun al Qadim meaning Urjun is the stalk of a date palm tree. So when you take a stalk of date palm tree, it's long and long and bendy, right? Okay, it's lightly bent and curved, but actually it's quite strong and firm. It's bendy because it's long and it's uh, bearing down of the other leaves from this date palm. When you let it dry, it becomes bent and thin and yellowish and bent. So Allah, Allah is, is referring to the new moon. You know the new moon? is like Arjun al-Qadim. Yeah? The new moon is bent. Right? Very, very dry and bent and excessively bent. And it is not even not fully white. It is like yellowish. And that is the new moon. So, Hatta adaka al-Arjun al-Qadim Until the moon becomes like the bent old date palm stalk, which is the new moon. Does that make sense if everyone? That's what Allah is referring to. وَالشَّمْسُ تَجْرِي لِمُسْتَقَرِّ لَهَا ذَٰلِكَ تَقْدِيرُ الْعَزِيزِ الْعَلِيمِ وَالْقَمَرَ قَدَّرْنَاهُ مَنَازِلَ حَتَّى عَادَكَ الْعُرْجُونِ الْقَدِيمِ لَالشَّمْسُ يَنْبَغِي لَهَا It does not befit the sun. لَالشَّمْسُ يَنْبَغِي لَهَا أَن تُدْرِكَ الْقَمَرِ For it to take over the revolving of the moon. وَلَالْقَمَرِ and and uh, al qamar wala layl sabiq al nahar nor can the night overtake the day yeah so allah azza wa jalla has not allowed the sun to overtake the moon nor has he allowed the night to overtake the day kullun fi falaki yasbahun every single thing in its orbit falak is orbit every single object is in its orbit yasbahun swimming in it wow you know when you hear this verse saying it has its own orbit you know, you're like, subhanAllah, really amazed because these are uh, amazing big uh, you know, uh, uh, objects out there, right? Sun, the moon, etc., planets, etc. And they have their own orbits, Allah is saying. So the Muslimi never knew about this except later on they discover that it does have their own orbits. And yasbahun, which shows that they are like swimming in it. How do you swim? Like you are actually floating in it. Which shows that, you know, outer space has no gravity. So subhanAllah, all of these things the scholars deduced from, deduced from this verse. They actually knew, they actually knew that outer space has no 
gravity because it says yes bahoon they're floating in it subhanallah so some of the you know ma magic of the quran you cannot understand until you really ponder and and uh, ya, ya salam yani you really think about how allah subhanahu has told us so many things wa ayatul lahum and another sign for them anna hamalna dhurriyatahum that we have carried his offsprings their offsprings meaning the offsprings of uh, of uh, the children of Adam fil fulkil mashhoon in the fulk which is the ship mashhoon which is made of planks so we carried his dhurriya who are these people these were our parents from the children of Nuh from the people of Nuh that believed in Nuh and then everyone else was drowned the scholars have two opinions regarding this some scholars said that the whole world is, was drowned okay some scholars said when, when you know the when the water became high and uh, when everything was drowned, the whole world was drowned. Other scholars said no, only that area where Nuh lived, which is the Black Sea, which is which is the Mediterranean region, only that area was drowned. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. We don't know what the truth is, only Allah knows. But <coughs> uh, in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers us back to the story of Nuh and how he carried every single thing on the fulkil mashhoon. وَخَلَقْنَا لَهُمْ مِن مِثْلِهِ مَا يَرْكَبُونَ And we have created, we have created for them, وَخَلَقْنَا لَهُمْ And we have created for them, meaning for us, مِن مِثْلِهِ From the example of it, مَا يَرْكَبُونَ That which they are now able to ride. The scholars, they said this means, some, some of the scholars of the sea said, this verse means just like there is a ship for the oceans, there is a ship for the desert. And the ship for the desert is is a camel. <clears throat> so Allah is, here is referring to the camel that he created from which we are now able to sail through the land and through the desert. And that is the ship. That's why the camel is called the ship of the desert. Yeah? And that's what the Arabs call the camel. Because of this verse, the, amel, the, the Arabs call the camel the ship of the desert. Yeah? Right. Other scholars said, no, this refers to cars or some of the other things that we have today, chariots, from which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to, to travel in the land. Uh, whichever it is, all of them are, are, it's possible for this verse to be referring back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, knows best. But these are all signs. I mean, look at how Allah subhanahu wa has made us all of these things able to take us in the land and travel with it. Ikhwani, we have to really ponder on this. We must ponder on the car that we drive, the animals that we, that we, uh, uh, that we get on top of. Ya khuti, we really must ponder because these are all signs of Allah Zawajal, how He has allowed all of this for us to happen. And if we wanted, if we wanted, we could have shipwrecked the ships. So their screams, no one would have heard their screams. Meaning as they're dying, as they're screaming for, for someone to save them, no one would have heard their screams. And no one would have saved them from completely being drowned when they're being shipwrecked. This verse is very important. Except that I have a lot of rahmah. <coughs> except, meaning, except that I have overlooked my anger with rahmah, with mercy. For, so my, my rahmah is what allows me or what is stopping me from destroying every, everything. So Allah's rahmah is what is stopping him from destroying us right now. Despite our sins. Like guys, have you noticed how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for us even though we're sinning? Even when, he sin, even when we're sinning, Allah is providing for us, yes? Correct? Why is Allah doing that? Because his rahmah sabaqat is, is, uh, is ghadab. Because remember in the authentic hadith, the Prophet said, Allah said in the authentic hadith from him, he said, verily I have written that my mercy overcomes my anger. Correct? That is not only in the day of judgment, it's actually active now. Now Allah's mercy is more than his anger. Are we saying that in Malaysia, Allah, uh, none of the Muslims have made Allah angry? Don't we sin here in Malaysia? Of course we do. But why is there no disease, no mashallah, no uh, uh, instability, no punishment 
no drought, no war that has come to Malaysia ever. Why is that? Illa rahmatan minna. That's the point. Meaning out of mercy from Allah. And this is why Malaysians over here, brothers and sisters, all of you here in front of me, do not take this for granted. Because a day could come when everything could change. Totally. Yeah? Everything could change. Can you imagine, for example, how at this point in time, how Allah, for example, has saved Makkah. You know, Allah, Allah Azza wa says, لِإِلَافِ قُرَيْشٍ إِلَافِهِمْ رِحْلَةَ الشِّتَاءِ وَالصَّيْفِ فَلْيَعْبُدُ رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ أَلَّذِي أَطْعَمَهُ مِنْ جُوْ وَآمَنَهُ مِنْ خَوْفِ Right? So Allah has fed Quraysh from poverty, saved them from poverty and saved them from fear. But look at the north of Quraysh, look at the south of Quraysh. North of Quraysh, Syria, is in turmoil, right? North of Makkah, I'm saying, is in turmoil. South, in, in Yemen, how much turmoil and trouble and, and, and difficulty is going on there. So Ikhwani, always remember, if Allah has given us safety, and if Allah has given us safety from, from fear, and safety from poverty, this is a mercy from Allah, not because we deserve it. Not because we deserve it. We, have actually, we actually deserve Allah's punishment. What is the proof for that? The proof again is in the Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ يُؤَاخِذُ اللَّهُ النَّاسَ بِمَا كَسَبُوا مَا تَرَكَ عَلَى ظَهْرِهَا مِن If Allah took mankind to account, simply for what they have done with their own hands, He would not have left anyone on the face of this earth. So if Allah were to just give us what we deserve, He would not have left any human being on the face of this earth. وَلَكِنْ يُؤَخِّرُهُمْ إِلَىٰ أَجَلِ مُسَمَّةِ But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us respite until an appointed time. What does this mean? This means that we all deserve to be destroyed. We all deserve to be drowned to, to our death or to be destroyed by, by Jibreel or to be destroyed by a crushing of a mountain or an earthquake. We all deserve it. We all deserve our enemies to drop bombs here. We all deserve us to be killed. We all deserve it, Ikhwani. Like what's happening in Gaza and Syria. We all deserve this. We all deserve it. Except Allah's mercy is what has overtaken His anger. So Ikhwani, the only thing that we, we, we must do in order to, to bring on His mercy, is what Allah says in the Qur'an. He says, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لُيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ Allah will not punish them, O Muhammad Wasallam, as long as you are amongst them. But, what if Rasulullah Wasallam is not amongst us? Then look at the rest of that verse. Rest of the verse says, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ Allah will not punish them as long as they make tawbah to me. Okay, so lots of tawbah, lots of istighfar, lots of istighfar, lots of tawbah, brothers and sisters. Con continuously, every day, whilst you're sitting, it was reported that the scholars, some of the scholars, they used to repent to Allah more than 10,000 times a day. Ulema of Islam, 10,000 times a day. And it's easy. I counted how long it takes me to, to make istighfar 1,000 times. It takes me approximately 10 minutes. Astaghfirullah, 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 astaghfirullah. It takes me approximately one minute to make istighfar a hundred times. Yeah, So it takes approximately 10 minutes to make istighfar uh, 1,000 times. Ikhwani just get into the habit of making istighfar. And the authentic hadith in Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said the best friends of Allah are the ones who make the tawbah the most. Those who make tawbah the most, they are the best friends of Allah. Okay. إِلَّا رَحْمَةً minna wa mata'an ila heen. Except as a mercy from us, and as a provision until a little while. Ila heen, ila when? Ila heen. Heen means over here death. So, illa rahmatan minna, except mercy from us that stops us from destroying. Wa mata'an and a provision until their death. Ila heen meaning until their death. Wa idha qila lahum, and when it is said to them, ittaqu ma bayna aydikum wa ma khalfakum la'allakum turhamun. And when it is said to them, fear that which is in between, between you or in front of you, or behind you, لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ that you may have mercy, they become arrogant. They say no. They disobey Allah Azza wa Jal. وَمَا تَأْتِيهِمْ مِنْ آيَةٍ مِنْ آيَةِ رَبِّهِمْ And وَمَا تَأْتِيهِمْ There does not come to them. مِنْ آيَةٍ From the signs. مِنْ آيَةِ رَبِّهِمْ From the signs of Allah Azza wa Jal. إِلَّا كَانُوا Except that they are عَنْهَا Against these signs, مُعْرِدِينَ They turn away from these signs. How many signs does Allah Azawajal give us within ourselves? In our own life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives multiple signs, but we keep turning away from it. We must not do so. An example of a sign that Allah gives us is when we sin, 
we can see the effect in the way people behave with us. Or when we sin, we can see the effect in the way our wealth decreases. These are signs of Allah Zawajal in us. So Sufyan al used to say, I can see the effect of my sins in the way my wife speaks to me. <laughs> so brothers, if your wife is not speaking to you well, then don't blame anyone but yourself. Perhaps some sin you have done, for which not against them, but against Allah that you might have done, for which now your wife is misbehaving with you. In another authentic narration, it's reported Sufyan al said, I see the effects of my sin in the way my donkey speak, uh, behaves with me. My donkey behaves with him. His donkey behaves with him in a bad way, anger, angry way, misbehaving with him, all of this because of his own sin. So, Ikhwani, you have to see the effect of your sins, and that is a sign for Allah Zawajal, sign of Allah Zawajal in your own life. So, if your children are not, are not obeying you, why not? Perhaps it's a sin and a sign for you. So, do not ever leave these signs. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ اتَّقُوا مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَمَا خَلْفَكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ وَمَا تَأْتِيهِمْ مِنْ آيَةٍ مِنْ آيَةِ رَبِّهِمْ إِلَّا كَانُوا عَنْهَا مُعْرِدِينَ وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ أَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقَكُمُ اللَّهِ And when, when it is told to them, give sadaqah, right? Anfiqu, give money. Look at this verse, amazing verse. He said, when it is said to these people, these disbelievers, Anfiqu, give sadaqah, mimma razaqakum Allah, from what Allah has already given you. Qala الَّذِينَ kafaru, those who disbelieve, they say, لِلَّذِينَ amanu. To those who believe, anut'imu, shall we feed man, those who law yasha Allahu, that if Allah wanted, at'amah, he would have fed them himself. In antum illa fi dalali mubin, rather you are in manifest error. Meaning, why are we going to feed the ones who if Allah wanted, well, Allah would have fed himself? Can you see how these people are attributing their miserliness to Allah? They're attributing their miserliness to Allah. No, rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if He wanted, He could have fed them, yes. But Allah decreed that this dunya be a test. So He made certain people rich and other people poor. So that the test of the rich be whether they actually feed the poor. And the test of the poor be whether they are patient and ask Allah. These are the tests for both of them. So as a result, ikhwani, don't ever be of those people who say, you know what, we shouldn't feed these people. If Allah wanted, Allah would have fed them themselves. Rather, this is a statement of miserliness, and this is something which, unfortunately, the early Jews said. This is a comment which the early Jews made, for which Allah Zawajal became very angry and said, "In antum illa fi dalan you are nothing but in manifest error. You are in manifest error." وَيَقُولُونَ مَتَى هَذَا الْوَعْدِ And they say, "When will this promise come true?" In kuntum sadiqin, if indeed you are truthful. So they want to know when the day of judgment will come. Ma yanzuruna, they will not be looking, meaning they will be waiting for it or doing something, except that they will hear only one sayha, illa sayhatan wahida, except one scream, ta'khuduhum wahum yakhsimun, that it, that will take them whilst they are yakhsimun, meaning yakhtasimun, meaning that they are debating each other, meaning what? This verse is referring to the point that that whilst they are doing business. And they're debating, oh, how much is that? Oh, five ringer. No, 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 I'll pay two ringer for that. No, 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 I, I, no, 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 three ringer. No, two ringer. No, three ringer. Whilst they're debating in their markets and doing business, it will be only a scream that they will hear, one scream that they will hear, and that that, that is when the Day of Judgment will begin. Meaning Allah doesn't answer when the Day of Judgment will begin, but tells us what will happen when the Day of Judgment will begin. And that will be that the worst of people will be existing on this dunya, and they will be in their markets doing business. At that point, they will hear a scream, and the scream will start the day of judgment. Ma yanzuruna illa sayhatan wahidatan ta'khuduhum wahum yakhsimun. That will take them whilst they are debating and arguing about business. Fala yastati'una tawsiyatan. So when it comes, when the scream comes, la yastati'un, they will not be able to tawsiya, to give a farewell goodbye or a farewell parting advice. Tawsiyah is like a farewell parting advice. So do you have a farewell parting advice? Yes. Uh, son, be good, don't take drugs, eat vegetables. Wife, uh, you know, parting advice. Okay, whatever comes to your head, right? Parting advice. So the parting advice, they will not be able to. فَلَا يَسْتَطِعُونَ تَوْسِيَةً They will not be able to give a parting advice. 
وَلَا إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِمْ يَرْجِعُونَ Nor will they be able to run back to their families to protect them when the day of judgment happens. Meaning, this verse shows that when the day of judgment comes, it will be very, 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 very quick. How quick will it be? The Prophet ﷺ said, it will be faster when the day of judgment comes, it will be faster than a person can take a glass of water and put it to his mouth. How long does it take for you to take a glass of water, put it to your mouth? Less than a second. That is how quick, when the scream happens, everything will be destroyed in front of them. So they will not be able to. Yeah? It's not like those Hollywood or Bollywood movies you've seen when the destruction happens slowly, slowly. Oh, here, a little bit of earthquake. Oh, what happened? Oh, nothing much. Let's go back. Oh, another big earthquake. No, no, no. Nothing like that. It will be completely in one go, total destruction that will take place in one go. Okay? In one authentic hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, he said, that the day of judgment will come faster than a person can drink half a glass of water. Imagine half a glass of water, how long does it take for you to drink it? So the day of judgment will come faster than that. This is what Allah says, فَلَا يَسْتَطِعُونَ تَوْسِيَةً وَلَا إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِمْ يَرْجِعُونَ Nor will they have enough time for them to go back to their families. This is how quick when the day of judgment happens. Which day will the day of judgment take place? On a Friday. Today. <coughs> Friday. In the authentic hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, On a Friday, all of creation is afraid, except for mankind and jinn. Why is all of creation afraid? Because they think this could be the Friday on which the Day of Judgment comes. Tayyib Ikhwani subhanAllah. Very amazing. فَلَا يَسْتَطِعُونَ تَوْسِعَةً وَلَا إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِمْ يَرْجِعُونَ Nor can they return back to their families. وَنُفِخَ فِي sur And the sur, meaning the horn, has been blown into. What is the sur? The, the Prophet ﷺ said, A sur qarnun yunfakhu fihi. It is an authentic hadith where he said, the sur is a horn in which it is blown into. So that is the instrument that has been given to this angel called Israfil to blow into. In one authentic hadith it is reported that Israfil is an angel who does not blink. He's an angel who does not blink. Why does he not blink? Because he is afraid that if he blinks, the command might come at that time and he might end up delaying the day of judgment. So he is so worried about it, so he's looking at the throne and not blinking at all, waiting for the command to come. In one authentic hadith, the Prophet ﷺ woke up with a bad dream. You know how when we see a bad dream, we wake up, you know, like we are you know, huffing and puffing. He saw a very bad dream. So suddenly Aisha was asleep and she felt the Prophet ﷺ waking up very suddenly. So she also woke up and said, Ya Rasulullah, an'im, an'im. Yani, ya Rasulullah, peace, peace. Yani, be at rest. What's wrong? What's wrong? So he, so the Prophet ﷺ said, he said, Kayfa an'am? How can I rest? When I have seen the Sahib of Sur, when I've seen just in my dream, and the dreams of Anbiya are true, right? So I've just seen in my dream that the Sahib of Sur, which is the angel of, uh, 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 of the blowing of the horn, so the angel of the horn, who is Israfil, has taken a deep breath, and he has puffed out his cheek, meaning he's put the air into his cheeks, and he has put the horn into his mouth, and he is now looking at the throne, waiting for the command to be given, meaning, Israfil has gotten ready. Okay, Israfil has gotten ready. He's taken a deep breath, he's puffed out his cheeks and he's put the horn to his mouth and he's looking at the throne waiting now without blinking at the command to be given. This is why the Prophet ﷺ said, when I die, there is nothing else remaining except for you to wait for the last hour. After the death of Rasulullah ﷺ, the last hour can come at any time. Last hour can come at any time. And that's why in the authentic hadith in Bukhari, the Prophet ﷺ said, بُعِثُّ أَنَا وَسَعَتِهَا كَذَا I and the last hour have been sent like this. Meaning together. So when I am gone, then there is nothing left except the last hour. SubhanAllah. فَلَا يَسْتَطِعُونَ تَوْسِعْتًا وَلَا إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِمْ يَرْجِعُونَ Nor can they return back to their families. وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ And the horn has been blown into. فَإِذَا هُمْ مِنَ الْأَجْدَاثِ It is as if مِنَ الْأَجْدَاثِ From أَجْدَاثِ is the graves. So they are, it is as if from their graves, إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَنْسِلُونَ To their Lord running. يَنْسِلُونَ meaning يَسْعَوْنَ meaning running. They are running to their Lord. So they'll be running, they'll be rushing out of their graves, coming and running to Allah Azza wa Jal. 
Qalu, they will say, Ya waylatana, Ya waylana. They said, Ya waylana, woe to us, man ba'athana, who has resurrected us, min marqadina, from our deep sleep. Who has resurrected us from a deep sleep in our graves? Ya qalu, Ya waylana, man ba'athana min marqadina. Subhanallah, how powerful is that, yeah? Oh, woe to us, who has woken us from up from the sleep. Hada, the angels will say, Hada, this Ma'wa'da Rahman is what the Rahman, the most merciful, has promised. Wasadaq al Mursalun. And the messengers were definitely truthful. Were definitely truthful about the day of judgment. In Kanat Illa Sayhatan Wahida. It is nothing but one scream or one blowing of the horn. Wahida. Fa then it is as if Jami'un, all of this creation, Ladaina Muhdarun, will be present in front of me, present in front of me. Just one scream. Yaqwati, how amazing is it that we will be resurrected on that day, all our forefathers and our offsprings, and all animals, including dinosaurs, including everything that is in the oceans, will be resurrected all on that day. Muhdarun, presented in front of Allah in rows and ranks. Can you imagine that day? Unbelievable day. Unbelievable day. Subhanallah. You know, and that's why, you know, my kids came up to me the other day. Are the dinosaurs going to be resurrected? And I said, yeah. Even the dinosaurs are going to be resurrected. I said, subhanallah, what an amazing day is going to be. What if they eat us? I said, no, they won't be able to eat us. Trust me. No more eating on that day. No more food. <laughs> but subhanallah, yani, you know, kids, you know, they have their... Unlimited questions, right? When you answer one question, they keep on asking another one. But can you imagine that great day? And, and the power of this verse, that only one scream in the horn, and everything has been recreated again, all of them present in front of me. How powerful is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? فَالْيَوْمَ لَا تُظْلَمُ نَفْسٌ شَيْئًا So today, no human being will be harmed. وَلَا تُجْزَوْنَ or anyone will be recompensed illa ma kuntum ta'malun except by what you used to do in this dunya this is why it is not enough to simply believe you must act it is not enough to simply believe you must act and ramadan is the greatest sign that action is is required along with faith because it is full of actions it is full of ibadat so ikhwani if all we had to do is just believe in the heart and not to act in no actions that Ramadan would not be required. But Ramadan is the day, is the month of actions. It is a month of fasting and sadaqah and taraweeh and itikaf. So how can we therefore come to Allah without any actions? It is for this reason why, because of this verse and others, that the scholars of Islam said, anyone who comes to Allah with only iman in his heart and no actions will reside in Jahannam forever. Anyone who comes to Allah, okay, with only iman, in the heart, not iman on the lips or iman on the, his limbs, meaning no actions. He says, oh, I love Allah, but he has no salah, no zakat, no hajj, no sadaqah, no good deeds, right, that he has done. He, that person cannot be a believer at all. It's like, for example, a person who says to his wife, honey, I love you so much, but he is rude to her, doesn't spend time with her, doesn't give her any money. And then one day he comes home and says, honey, I love you so much. Does it really mean anything? No, it's only lip service. That love is only lip service. It does not mean love at all. So you cannot profess love to Allah without action. And so as a result, our actions will bring on the mercy of Allah. The verse must not be understood to mean that the actions will be what brings on Allah's, Allah's rahmah and mercy. No. The actions will bring on Allah's mercy, which will bring on Jannah. Right? But it is not the actions by itself that will deserve Jannah because the actions are so deficient and so incomplete compared to how complete and perfect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. So let us take uh, account of this brothers and sisters, that we will not be recompensed except due to our actions, and that means that our actions will bring on Allah's mercy, which will bring on, bring on forgiveness, which will bring on inshallah ta'ala Jannah in the hereafter. We will stop here, bi'ithnillah, for today inshallah, and with Allah's will, we will take the last two pages inshallah ta'ala tomorrow, the last two pages of Surah Yaseen. 
uh, inshallah ta'ala when we finish it off bi tomorrow after tomorrow if allah wills we will take the surah called surah as safat which is the angels surah of uh, the safat safat means angels uh, and it is a surah full of beautiful parables and the stories of uh, the prophets of god story of ismail story of ibrahim story of musa story of isa story of all the prophets of god inshallah ta'ala coming up in surah as safat inshallah from sunday onwards inshallah so tomorrow we'll finish off surah yaseen don't be late zakum la khair assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh